Adding additional storage to an existing PC is one of the most common upgrades that people make, or at least want to make. And it also just so happens to be one of the easiest things to do yourself as far as PC building goes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a traditional hard drive like this one into your PC and we'll have you up and running in no time. So if you've never done this before, this video is going to be perfect for you. Modern hard drives use the SATA interface and they have two main connectors. The small ones for data transfer and the big ones for power. If you look closely, you'll notice an L shape on there. That little notch makes it so the cable can only plug in one way. And that's awesome because it means you really can't mess that part up. To get this drive set up and running, we're going to need a few different things. So these things here are SATA data cables. These connect the drive to the PC and allow information to be transferred back and forth. That's basically it. Now there's a couple of different designs or styles if you want to call it that. First of all, you might notice that these two that I have in my hand are different color. That doesn't mean anything. They come in all sorts of different colors. What is different though is the type of connectors that they have on them. Some of them are just perfectly straight like this one and then others have a 90 degree connection like this. They do the exact same thing. The only difference is the 90 degree connection is good for like if you've got an obstruction like the back of your PC uh, side panel or something like that right here, sometimes a 90 degree connection can help you route your cables without any interference there. In all other instances, these straight cables work perfectly fine and like I said, there's no advantage to one over the other. In terms of performance, it's just the way they kind of connect in there. To get power to the drive, we're going to need a SATA power cable. Now this should already be connected to your power supply inside your case. You just have to search for it in there. Unless you have a modular power supply, which is where this cable came from, that just means you might have to plug it into the power supply yourself. If you do have a modular power supply, this is what the plugs usually look like that plug into the actual unit. And then the other end has your connectors for connecting to the drive. You can see the connector on there, it looks a whole lot like the data cable, only a little bigger and longer. And it's got that same little L-shaped notch there to make sure it only goes in one way. This cable has three separate connectors on it, so I can use that to connect three drives to the same power cable if I want to. Or you can always have separate cables running to each drive if that's what you want to do. But generally speaking, if you can use one cable for more than one drive, that keeps clutter down in your case and helps with airflow and stuff like that. And the last thing we're going to need is a screwdriver, unless you've got a case that's all toolless, and those are out there. So if, if that's what you're using, then your life's even easier. But for me, I'm going to need my screwdriver, and I'm going to have to do a little manual labor. The first thing we got to do is get our case opened up. Some cases use thumb screws that you can take out with your fingers, and others use traditional screws that are going to make you get out your screwdriver. Either way, there's usually two screws along the back edge of each side panel. The main panel on this case that I'm using is actually made of tempered glass, and the way it's held down is these four separate thumb screws in each corner. So I'm just going to take those out, get the glass panel off, and set it aside for now. I always like to start by getting my drive mounted first, and then we can move on and start plugging everything in. So let's focus on the back side behind the area where the motherboard and all the other components are installed. Most PC cases have drive bays either up near the front or along the bottom of the case, and this case has a removable cage right here. The advantage of a removable system is that it lets you take it right out of the case and work on it outside where there's way more space so you're not all restricted and trying to get your screwdriver in there where you've got all your other components and cables and stuff. Some cases use a hybrid approach where there's a fixed cage inside and then some removable trays where you can slide them out, mount your drive, and then slide them back in. But either way, the mounting concept is the same. So I'm going to show you the way it works on this case and then you'll be able to apply that to whatever the situation is with the case that you have. Hard drives have sets of threaded mounting holes on both sides. We have to slide the drive into the cage or the tray, making sure that all the holes line up. And it's important to make sure that the connectors on the drive are going to be accessible. Most of the time, that means mounting the drive with the connections facing the back or the side behind the motherboard. I'm just going to fasten the drive in with the four screws that came with the case. Now I can put the cage back into the case and start hooking up all my cables. First, I'm going to plug in the power cable. That's the bigger of the two connections on the back of the drive. And then we'll follow that up with the data cable. And then I'm going to take the other end of the data cable and feed it through to the other side of the case. That way I can get it plugged into the motherboard. Now let's turn the case around and take a look at the other side. We need to locate the SATA connectors on the motherboard. They're usually along the edge of the board somewhere. On this board, they're right here. It's actually a little bank of four ports for drive connections. These connections are physically exactly the same as the data connector on the hard drive, so all we have to do is take that data cable and plug it into one of the open ports. And remember, it only goes in one way, so you can't mess it up. 
As far as working with the actual hardware goes, that's all there is to it. If you have any more drives to install, you can repeat the process and get them in there. If not, go ahead and put your case back together. Put the side panels on, screw everything up, and then plug it in and turn it on. And then we can jump into Windows and I'll show you how to get your new hard drive initialized so you can start using it. So here we are in Windows, and this is Windows 11 that I'm running, but if you're on Windows 10, the process is exactly the same. So all you have to do is come over to the little search icon here and type in disk management. And right here this says create and format hard disk partition. We're just going to click on that. So that opens up this window and what this is showing you is all the different drives and partitions that are installed in your system. And anything that shows up as unallocated with a black stripe at the top basically is your new drive. So that's what you just installed and it's not usable yet until you initialize it and create a new volume. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All we have to do is right click on that unallocated space and click new simple volume. So that opens up a wizard and we're just gonna click through and follow the steps to get our drive set up. So we'll click next. Now chances are you wanna take advantage of all the space available on your drive and not partition separate pieces of it. So what you're gonna do here is make sure that the simple volume size in megabytes matches the maximum disk space available in megabytes. And by default, it should just show up like that. So all you have to really do here is click next. This lets you assign a drive letter. So if you don't want the default, whatever pops up in there, you can pick whatever you want. I'll just call it Z for now. Now we need to confirm the settings that we're going to use to actually format the drive. So file system and TFS, that's fine. Allocation unit size, you can leave that default. Volume label, you can actually give the drive a name right now if you want to do that. So if you're going to use this just to install like your Steam library or something, maybe you just want to call it games or something like that. Quick format is perfectly fine, so we'll leave that checked. And then we'll click next. Now this is just gonna show you all the settings that you selected, so you can kinda of take a quick look at it if you want, and if you're happy with it, go ahead and click finish, and the computer's gonna do the rest. And there we go, that's our Z drive, we gave it the name Games, so if we go over here to Windows Explorer, we should see that right there. So I have the full space available, 931 out of 931, and I can click on it now, drag and drop stuff in there, and install my games, programs, whatever I wanna do, and I'm good to go. Now this is intended to be the first video in a new series on this channel that focuses on entry level basic PC building tasks. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff and you want to expand further and gain the confidence to build your own PCs, definitely get subscribed because there's a lot more content like that coming up. And we'll see you soon.